Hey everyone, I am Matt Seuss, and today we are taking a look at the just released DxO's Pure Raw version two, an update to their original Pure Raw program that came out the other year, that if you have not used this yet, and if you wanna get the absolute best quality out of your files, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at this. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what is new, what is DxO Pure Raw, who's it for, how are you gonna use it, and I'm gonna show you some results, and so let's go ahead and get started right away. Now, Pure Raw is for raw files. That's why it's called Pure Raw. So it's for raw, raw files. Won't work on JPEGs or TIFFs or PSDs at all. It is, in my opinion, the best out there. Beats Topaz Sharpen and Topaz uh, Denoise in terms of image quality. You're not going to find anything better than this if you want to get the most out of your files. If you're shooting, if you have old cameras that have a lot of noise in it, throw them in, throw those raw files into DxO Pure Raw. You're going to be amazed at the results. Even brand new cameras. It is perfect for high ISO files. It is even great for low ISO files too that don't have a lot of noise. You can bring out a ton of sharpening. Now, who this is for, this is literally for anyone who wants to improve the quality of their photos. Doesn't matter what workflow you have. It comes as a standalone program and it also comes as a plugin inside of Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna talk about some workflow differences here. Now, if you already own Photolab 4 or Photolab 5, the elite versions, you already have Deep Prime and that's the key ingredient here for getting those noise-free images in, in Pure Raw. So you may not necessarily need Pure Raw two if you already have the elite versions of Photolab 4 or 5. It depends on your workflow though. If you're just 100% using Photolab 4 or 5, go ahead and stick with that. You don't need this upgrade or this standalone program. However, if you jump around and use different photo software programs and you process one raw file here and one raw file there, having this standalone program is going to really help your workflow tremendously. The regular price US dollars is 129, the upgrade is $79. Now, if you have version one of Pure Raw, that's it for updates for that software. You're not gonna get any newest camera updates in Pure Raw version, uh, version one. So if you need, if you, you're buying the latest cameras and waiting for DxO support, you are going to need version two of Pure Raw. Now let's start talking about what is new in version two. Speed on a Apple Silicon Max up to four times faster. I'm running an M1 Mac Mini here from last year. I, the speed difference is completely noticeable. Up to 1.5 times faster on the best Windows computers as well. Also what is new? DxO Pure Raw version two now supports Fujifilm X Trans files. So, a lot of, I know a lot of Fuji people out there are going to be really excited about that. On the Windows, it has now high DPI support. There's also 8,000 new optics modules bringing the support now to more than 70,000 lens and camera combinations. I'll talk about the modules in just a little bit here. And there's a whole new workflow that is super beneficial, especially for Lightroom Classic users. Let's go ahead and start taking a look at the program and I'll go through all those steps here. First thing what we're gonna do is take a look at the standalone version over here. And a very simple interface, this is what we have here. We can click on this here to add raw files to process or we can just drag and drop. And what I'm gonna do here is from my finder, it's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna select this Olympus raw file, drag and drop that into the uh, into the program and for those of you who are curious they don't have support yet for the om1 camera i am bugging them constantly to get us support for this can't wait for them to get that support and i'll be doing tests on that once that is out but right now no support on that but let's take a look here because when you import this and if getting ready to process the, these DxO modules here and these are lens and camera combinations and they've gone ahead and profiled all tons of lenses combined with different cameras to get the most out of the adjustments that DxO is doing. In terms of optics for the lens and camera combination, DxO is fixing vignetting, the darkening of the image borders. It's fixing any distortion that you have shooting with wide angle lenses, even up to some telephoto lenses have a little bit of distortion. It's fixing chromatic aberration. It's improving the lens sharpness as well. 
Not only that, but it's helping with the noise. They're using Deep Prime, which features AI and deep learning to help remove the noise in your photos. And it does a fabulous job. When you load a photo and get ready to process it, if it does not have the specific lens and camera combination of that file that you're working on, a little prompt is gonna come up and it's gonna ask you to download it. These files are really tiny, usually like about nine or 10 megs in, in size. Once you download it once, you don't have to worry about it. It's always there for you. So you may see this pop up from time to time. Uh, right now, I already have this downloaded, so I don't need to do anything. Let's go ahead and hit cancel. And let's click on the process images. And real simple interface here. You have three options for the raw processing method. So we have HQ, Prime, and D Prime. I always leave it on deep prime that gives you the best noise reduction again it's that ai and deep learning that is being used here amazing job on the noise reduction little drop down arrow here you can if you choose turn off the global lens sharpening if you find your files are getting a little too sharp from a dxo some cameras are sharper than others in this program so you can turn that off over here you could also even turn off the lens distortion correction if you want and keep those fisheye images looking like a fisheye image output format I always keep it at DNG. Now this is a linear DNG and the file size is going to be bigger than your original DNGs. There's a ton of information in here that DxO is putting in their demosaicing algorithms here. So the file size will be bigger. So you're not gonna necessarily want to run this on every single photo that you shoot run this on the files that you want to print or send to clients or what have you. And then the destination photo, we can specify a DxO folder in the original images folder, which is what I usually do. Let's go ahead and click on process and we'll see exactly how fast this works. So again, we're looking at this real time on a 20 megapixel uh, Olympus RAW file, processing it on the, e, on the M1 Mac. And look at that, we are just about done. And here we are, we are done. Once you've processed your photo, you can click on export to, and you can send this directly to Lightroom Classic, to Photoshop, or any other program that you want. Let's not do that. Uh, you can also export the original RAW file too, but you know, I mean, you know where the original RAW file is, so usually I don't need to export that same thing there. Uh, but let's go ahead and cancel that, and let's take a look at the results here on what we got. So I'll bring this up and we'll take a look at a before and after and not seeing too much here. Let's start zooming in. Let's go to one to one and we'll move this guy down and take a look at the before and after here. This was shot at ISO 3200 on a micro four thirds camera and look at the noise that has just been removed here. Let's go up to two to one and let's take a look at that detail and you can really see that noise before and after. It makes it look like this photo was photographed at ISO 200 or something like that. Just amazing. And with this clarity and sharpness, unbelievable job that this does. Now, I just brought one file in here. You can drag and drop multiple images in here as well and have them process that. Now, another improvement in what they did was they enabled a, uh, a shortcut inside Finder and also Windows Explorer too. We're, we're gonna be taking a look at Finder uh, because I'm using a Mac right here. And let's go ahead and bring up the Finder window. Now, one thing you're gonna wanna do here is make sure that first off, you go into your system preferences on the Mac and then go under extensions and make sure that the added extensions that DxO Pure Raw 2 is enabled in there. Once you have that enabled, then all you need to do is go ahead and let's go ahead and select these two files. Let's right click on those. And then right down below here under quick actions, this is where all the new stuff is for DxO Pure Raw 2. Uh, we can go ahead and process DNG using HQ, uh, Prime, D Prime. We can do a JPEG, DNG, and bake JPEG, or just process using the standards, uh, st standalone settings. Let's go ahead and just go with D Prime, because again, that's my default there. And let's go ahead and run that. And what's going to happen is it's not even going to load it in the program, so the program doesn't need to be open at all. This window will pop open, though, and it's going to process your files behind the scenes. And we got two files going here. Once it is done, we're going to see those in the DxO folder. So we're just finishing up now. We got about five more seconds to go. And that is it. And let's go ahead now and take a look inside the DxO folder. And now we have those other two files that I just did. We can see that they're DxO uh, 
dprime dng files. So, so it adds that information to the file name. Let's go ahead now and take a look at Lightroom Classic and see what is new inside here. Okay, so here we are inside of Lightroom, and what I'm gonna do here is you can select a whole bunch of photos. I'm just gonna work on one. Uh, and let's go ahead and take a look here. We can notice that I've done some highlight and uh, shadow details. I've adjusted the exposure a little bit, some saturation. I've made some work, uh, I've made some corrections already on this file. I don't wanna lose those corrections when I'm using DxO. And this is something brand new in version two. First off, make sure you go under catalog settings and make sure that automatically writes changes to XMP is and is checked. Make sure that's enabled. Then all you have to do is go ahead, right click on, I'm just right clicking on this one photo. I could do multiple. Let's go down to export and click on DxO Pure Raw. Now this is gonna check to make sure that you have the right lens and, uh, and camera body uh, module. If you don't have it downloaded already, it's gonna have you download it right here. I already have this downloaded. We're gonna keep it on Deep Prime. This is the same dialogue that we saw in the standalone. I could go ahead and change, uh, turn off the global lens sharpening or lens distortion. I'm gonna leave those on. Output format, keeping that at that DNG. And we're gonna have that go into the original image folder and click on process. And just like before in the finder, it's, it's now processing this all in the background. It's gonna put it in that DXO folder and Lightroom's actually gonna know about it too. It's gonna be imported right into your catalog right away so you don't have to go looking around for it. And we can see here it is right here. If you look under collections, you'll find it under there. If I go to my uh, original library here, it is side by side right next to them. Now notice that the color is a little bit different. What happened here? Because I had the settings, you know, did all those settings get applied? Let's take a look in develop. And we can see all those adjustments have been made. It's the same exact thing as this file here. This is where the demosaicing comes into play. The demosaicing that DxO is doing has a slight color shift that is different than in Lightroom Classic or Capture One Pro or any of the raw files. So you will see a little bit of a difference. I see it more in blue sky images than I do in you know photos that don't have a lot of sky in it or, or what have you. So it depends on the file you may see some differences there. So you may need to do a little bit of adjustments here. So if I lower the temperature down a little bit on here, maybe increase the tint just a little bit. And look at that, we're, we're pretty close to what the Lightroom version was, maybe warm that up just a little bit more. And there we are, we're really close. I could fine tune that if I needed to. Another important thing to note though too, and this is really cool, is that look at this, all the sharpening uh, that was here. And if I had any noise reduction, if I had that enabled, once DxO processes it and it comes back into Lightroom, it turns both of those off. So if I had any noise reduction on, it's not gonna reapply the noise reduction because you don't wanna reapply noise reduction onto a file that already had noise reduction on it. Same thing with sharpening too. So that is turned off as well as the lens corrections. So lens corrections will be turned off too because DxO is doing its own lens corrections. Uh, I didn't have it enabled in here, but had I had those lens corrections enabled, DxO would have just ignored those lens, corre lens corrections and done its own proprietary lens corrections on the file. And then again, coming back into Lightroom, it's not gonna put lens corrections on top of lens corrections. Let's go ahead and take a look at these two files side by side. And let's grab these two over here and we'll take a look. Uh, we got the DxO on the left and the original on the right. And look at the difference in the detail there. Look at those trees. That is just amazing. Let's go over here and take a look at this mountain over here. Look at the texture and detail in the rock compared to over here. And this was shot at a low ISO. This was shot at ISO 64. Hardly any noise in this file. Okay, so you can see a little bit of noise up in here. DxO cleaned it up perfectly. So again, this was a low ISO shot. I probably wouldn't have used DxO just for the noise reduction because there's hardly anything in this original file, but I definitely, definitely would have used it for the sharpness. And look at that detail again, unbelievable. So that is DxO's Pure Raw version two. I highly recommend it. I love DxO. It's one of my favorite programs now for noise reduction, for sharpening, for color. I use Photolab 5. I also use Pure Raw 2, depending on which programs I'm gonna to use to process my photos. It sees almost all of my files. It does an absolutely great job on Olympus files. I've also used it on Sony files and Nikon and Canon too. It does a great job all around. 
So you can find a link for it down below. It is an affiliate link. However, it doesn't cost you anything to click on that link. And what that does do though, is it lets DXO know that, hey, I recommended it to you. And you know, I get a little bit of a kickback and it helps to support this channel. So if you like what you saw, hit that like button down below, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. If you got any questions, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Once again, I am Matt Seuss and I'll see you in the next video.